Jordan. Alex. How are you feeling? I feel like a million bucks. I'm so happy. I'm in a great mood. I look good. I feel good. I performed good. Got hit a little bit more than I should have. But I got two paychecks, and my last fight isn't me getting teabagged in front of a bunch of drunk degenerates. So I'm pretty good. Pretty damn good. Uh, I'm liking the outfit. What, uh, what inspired this? This is my granddad's outfit. Um, he passed away um, a, f a few years ago, and he was always like one of my biggest supporters. So when I fought Patty, I, w I promised myself I'm going to beat Patty, I'm going to dress in his suit, and that didn't happen. <laughs> so I thought, you know, on the rebound, this would be a good suit to wear, because I'm thinking about him. Uh, it's been a few minutes since your fight, man. Um, How did you feel about your performance? Um, I impressed myself. And... I always like struggle with like, self-belief a lot when I like am preparing. I have a lot of anxiety, but I'm very happy with that. I took a few punches. I didn't freak out. I didn't panic wrestle. I heard him to the body, and then I had good instincts. And yeah, I'm now a grappling specialist of two, with half his wins in the UFC by knockout. So quite happy with that. Uh, what was the game plan coming into the fight? Oh, the game plan was to take him down, submit him with something stupid to ensure that I could, like, get maybe three paychecks, hopefully. And I did not imagine in any of the scenarios in my head that I'd finish him that way. But I'm so happy I did. You know, I learned so much. And, yeah, it was really crazy having, like, Chris, uh, having the ref push me. Because, like, I thought, like, Victor somehow, like, bumped me. So I was going to swing again, and I saw the ref's head, and I was like, oh, I got a knockout. So, yeah. It wasn't the game plan, but I'm way happier with that side of circumstances. Yeah, so you picked up your first not, your first TKO, your first knockout. Um, you kind of predicted that when, when we last talked, so how, how did that feel? I don't, that was a joke. <laughs> that was a straight-up joke. I, did, I had no belief that I was really going to knock him out. I knew it was a possibility, you know, because things happen. But total joke. I would say in every interview, I'm going to get another knockout. Like, try to believe, maybe speak it into existence, but I'm like, that's not going to happen. He's never really been knocked out, or I think he hasn't been knocked out since like his first fight. And he's a striker, and he has very good durability, and he has very good at recovery, and he's tough as hell. There's no way I was supposed to knock him out, you know, if I'm being honest. But I did it, so. Um, how does it feel to be back in the winner's column? I know that you don't, do not like losing. I hate losing. I'm so glad that the last fight in my mind is going to be this. It's going to be a dominant win. An impressive showing for me, if I do say so myself, not to be cocky, but I'm very happy. I'm very impressed with myself. I have a lot of emotions, a lot of fears of this one. I just bought a house two months ago. I can't, and a car two weeks ago. Completely stupid financial decisions. Don't take advice from me. We're fighters. We get hit in the head for a living. But if I would have lost a fight after making those two crazy decisions with my credit now ruined, my life would have been over. So I'm really happy with how it worked out. Um, so, I mean, this is your fourth fight at the Apex. Do you think this knockout win got you a fight at the T-Bone Mill Arena later this year, or what's up? It damn very well better. Like, my wife has not seen me fight since I've been in the UFC. My family, my mom, everyone that supported me all along the way, they haven't been able to see me fight for now half of my career. And that's really bum. It really bums me out. But I, I really would love for my wife to be able to come to the next one, as long as I'm not flying to some other country where they hate me. You know, give me T-Mobile. Give me, like, the hometown crowd. I deserve it, damn it. And I could sell tickets there. I know I could sell tickets. This is my home. Uh, so when, when, when would be the perfect timetable in, in your mind? Let's fight next week. Nothing happened to me. I mean, maybe when the adrenaline wears off, I'll, be, I'll like, recant that statement because, you know, I kick some elbows and maybe my hands will hurt. I don't know. But I could fight next week as of now. I'm going to keep dieting just in case because I like the way I look when I'm skinny. And we'll see what happens. And then finally, uh, came up to Pretty Ricky, uh, grand on me. Well, what was the decision behind that? It's my wife's idea. You know, it's like one of our songs for some reasons, you know. Um, so, funny story. So, before I fought Patty, the plan we were like, you're going to beat Patty, we're going to start trying to have another kid. Then I lost. So he stole my kid from me, okay? So, yeah. That song set in the mood for my entire day. I believe so. So, yeah, that's what it means. Awesome. Congrats, man. Thank you, man. I just want to know how you're going to top this outfit after your next one. Do you have something planned? 
Oh, I have some more of these suits. I have some very outdated taste in my clothing and everything. And this is why I deserve a crowd. You know, this is one of the downsides of the whole, you know, Venom Reebok era. Like, fighters can't, don't get to show their individuality as much. Like, can Venom make a leisure suit? That'd be so tight. I'd, I'd wear that every time. But, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to top it, but we'll figure something out. Well, if Bryce got his camo shorts, I feel like we can get you a leisure, leisure suit. We just have to get Twitter behind you. Right? I'm scared of Twitter, though. They're so mean to me. So, Twitter, me like, I'm a, I'm a tough fighter, you know, at least I think so, you know. I'm a toughish individual, but Twitter's so mean. But they can't talk crap this time. No one's going to run me off of social media for a week this time. Mostly going to be positive, I think. You really overestimate Twitter if you think they're not going to be mean still. Oh, yeah. It's Twitter but, we're talking about here. I've been bullied my entire life for a speech impediment, for being awkward, for being quiet, for being fruity, you know, for being the first openly gay UFC fighter. <laughs> I've been bullied my entire life. And being bullied off a of win does not hurt at all. You know, it's easy to talk crap when you're looking up at somebody, you know. So they can bully me all they want until I lose the next one. Then they better stop because that's not nice and free speech shouldn't be legal, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any suede or like crushed velvet uh, jackets or anything? I like do. So I went through a really big like Goodwill kick when I first got out of high school. So I have so many suit jackets. I dress like a bum every, every opportunity I get, though I never wear that except for church. And you don't go to church, at least my church, like dress like a pimp. It's not the best like reverent tone. But I, oh, I have so many things I want to wear. I have so many things. Well, now, now we're always going to be pulling for you to win. Not that we don't already, but now we're really pulling for it. Why, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Whose idea was the uh, dirty dancing leap? We were... Um, we were warming up on Monday, and he was like, you want to practice lift again? I'm like, you know what, yeah, for old time's sake, sure, you know, I'm a little heavier now, you know, and, but luckily, Chris, you know, he lifted me, he's been lifting me up for years, son, okay, and he got stronger, I got bigger, it worked out. I'll have to see a picture of it. I think I felt a little sloppy, but I'm happy with it. Execution was like, it was like a seven to eight out of ten, and you know, yeah. definitely a or three. Uh, uh, <laughs> Your part was good. I, f I blame his launch. I blame his jump. I blame. Yeah, could have got up a little. I didn't have it like. I, it's just Michael Bisping kind of got stuck on the train tracks. You know, <laughs> he's trying to trying to instigate an argument with with me, and he's getting in my way of my victory stuff. But yeah. <laughs> and then last for me, you talked about buying the house, buying the car. You know, but in a sense, you said they could be bad decisions. But to do this, you have to go all in on yourself, right? You have to bet on yourself, and you bet on your career. So in that sense, you. You'd do that again any other day, right? Yeah, one life, roll the dice. So, What kind of car did you get? I got a 2023 um, Chevy Bolt. Very I'm full electric. I'm virtue signaling out the wazoo. <laughs> you know, I can't afford a Tesla yet, you know. Where's the camera? But <laughs> right now, Chevy Bolt does just as good. That's awesome. Congrats on the victory. Thank you, man. We're all good? <laughs>